Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Poor Boy's Little Homestead. As always, if this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, today, we are sharpening our chainsaw chain. Yes, sir, I done messed up and stuck it in a piece of wire or in, the, in some in the dirt, too, but I got a piece of wire, and it sure enough buggered up some of my teeth. Well, guys, this here is the Chicago Electric Electric Chainsaw Sharpener. I'm going to read to you right here. It says it's easy to operate, sharpens your chains in minutes, cuts in left and right teeth at precisely the same depth, chain vice adjustments to all chain designs and pitches. Well, guys, I've been using this little fella quite a bit. The day I purchased it, I come home and I had six chains hanging in my shed because I was bad about running up to the parts house. They make chains up there, and I just, when I burgered one up, I'd just go get me a new chain. But I always just hung my old ones on the wall. But this little fella right here is great. Especially when you get your chain in something and you done booger some teeth up, it'll cut the whole new angle on it that it's supposed to be you need to determine on your chains a lot of your chains has a little line right on top of that teeth and you can adjust this angle here to get it to fit line up with that line and like this teeth on this chain is 30 degrees well, what i like about this little chainsaw sharpener you undo the hand nut here on the bottom and you can adjust it to whatever angle that's on your chain. Well, like I said, mine's 30 degrees, so I turn it around here to 30 degrees. The thing, all it is is like a little miter box, just like the miter box you cut wood with. I tighten it down to hold it on 30 degrees. When you put your chain in there, guys, all you do is just set it up in there. You gotta raise this little lever right there up, and that's your stop. Set your chain in there. Get it in the groove, just like the groove on the chain, the bar on the chainsaw, I mean. And this little stop right here, once you get your degrees set, this here spins your chain around. These two knobs on each side. This little stop here pushes against the back of the teeth, the, the tooth that you're going to be sharpening on. Well, to get it adjusted, you got an adjuster here that you can micro adjust to get it just the way you want it for the chain. When you start on a new chain, you got to adjust this where to stop that tooth right there at the right spot. Then after that, this is the break. So when you roll up to the next length, then you back it up and that stop bar holds it. Then you smash the break and that holds the chain tight. It just squeezes it down here on the bar. Then you can come down with it. And guys, what's good about this, it's gonna cut that same angle on every length. Now some of them, especially when you booger a chain up like I have, that's what I like about this. If you're doing this with a hand file, you're gonna have to really do some filing to straighten up a boogered up tooth. But this here cut a whole new angle. Now some of these on this chain, I done done this chain a couple of times, so some of my teeth are a little shorter than others, so you, you can't always depend on this stop to be just right. You got to look at it every time before you just pull it down and cut, because this tooth right here, you can see, is a lot shorter than them buttons. I had to, that must have been a pretty good boogered up one last time and had to cut it down that short. But you can just use these hand adjusters here to get it just where you want it, and then pull down and sharpen it. So we're gonna get going and I'm gonna cut all the ones that's on this angle here. And see, you wanna just go around every other tooth while you got it set to this angle and cut the ones on that angle. And then we'll turn around and change the degree back to the left and we'll get it adjusted with our stop bar and we'll cut all the teeth that's on that angle. So let me give y'all a little bit of a demonstration here. I'm gonna go on and cut the ones all on this angle, and then we'll turn it around and we'll change the other one. It's got an on and off switch right here on the top. 
and also it's got an adjustment knob right here that you adjust the depth so you won't go too far. If you don't adjust that depth, see, you can cut down and be cutting down into your length. You don't want to cut down into your length. You want to adjust this here where it stops. Bottoms out at the right point. So let's get started here. I'm going to get y'all over here and try to set the camera where you can see down in here. Because I know y'all can't see from that side. All right, guys, maybe I'll get y'all set right there. But you see, you just roll your tooth forward till you get the one that's on that angle. We couldn't, I would call it the right angle since I'm to my right on the settings here on 30 degrees. But you see this stop. Stops. You roll it backwards until it hits the back of that tooth. Then you smash your brake up here on your handle right here. And that squeezes it on this chain to hold that chain st still. Now, if your chain ain't boogered up, just needs sharpening, you don't want to take that big of a bite. But this chain's boogered up, so I'm cutting, kind of cutting new angles. And like I said, this chain's been boogered up so much before, some of these teeth are longer than the other ones. You don't want to just put it on there and hold it because you'll get your tooth height. And you don't want to get it the height, make it this color because that'll soften it. Guys, like I said, what's good about this, you can do a chain and get your angles all straight. Put this chain back on your chainsaw and then you can just hit it a quick lick with a file and you got you one good sharp chain again. See that teeth there was a little shorter, so it ain't cutting, so I'm just going to let off my brake and roll it forward just a little bit. Smash my brake back and then sharpen it a little bit. That, that tooth was shorter than the rest of them, so my stop ain't exactly in line. telling y'all I don't know if y'all can see it but on a teeth on a lot of chainsaws it's got a line right across the top of it that's the line of the angle you want to set this on so even if you got a chain and you don't know the angle the degrees I'm calling it right here you can pull that chain up there and line that up with that line and adjust your degrees until it's straight your blade straight with that line and then you'll know what your chain is that's what them lines is put on there for all chains don't have that. Now 
there's one that's pretty, pretty boogered up. I'm gonna have to take some off of that. I'm gonna have to roll it forward. I'm gonna take a pretty good bite off of that, but I'm gonna do it slow because I don't want to get that too, too hot. And see, that's, that tooth there is real short. It done been cut down so much. Y'all can see I'm pretty rough on chainsaw chains. I go cutting fences out of the turn rows or something like that. I'm always getting them in wire, mess up and touch the metal post. short too so I couldn't I couldn't go by the stop I had to ease it forward a little bit further and what's bad about that is when it's not up against that stop it'll let your tooth ride up so you don't get the perfect angle cut on it but let me tell you it's better than a dull tooth I promise you So after you get that all your angles to that direction, all you do is loosen this little nut right here on the bottom. Move this right around here to 30 degrees back the other direction. And now we can sharpen all the teeth. It's back to the left angle. And I'm calling that left angle because I got the minor box turned to the left. Actually, when you got this turned to the left, that's the angle going to the right on the, the points on the right, I don't know how you call that. The point on the length to the right, when you got this to the left. So, I don't know if you call that right angle or left angle. I'm calling it left because I'm looking at this moves my minor box to the left. And then we just go around the chain and do the same thing again. Like I said, you got two knobs here you can use to run your chain forward. You want to back it up against your stop to make sure it's backed up against it. Then hold your brake down. If your tooth ain't exactly the same length, just move it forward just a little bit with your hand control knobs here. But guys, if you're starting off on a new chain, if I'd have had this before I started whacking this chain up with my hand file, not getting the angles just right, I could have kept all my teeth cut the same length with this little minor box sharpener here. Unless you got one real boogered up tooth, you don't want to cut all your teeth short just cause you're trying to straighten up a couple that's real boogered up. And that's kind of what's done happen to me.
guys when you're doing this you can you can look at it and see you can feel the ones that ain't been sharp and you can tell the difference how much sharp that point and stuff is and how it, that wheel cuts that angle it's, that wheel's kind of rounded on this thing and i'll show y'all a new wheel like a while uh-oh now see that tooth right there's a little short so the backstop ain't gonna hold it down, so it's gonna try to tilt up on me. See how it tilts up? Cause the backstop ain't holding it. Now what you could do is adjust your backstop right over here to hold it down. But to do that, see, I'd have to readjust this backstop on there or two. So I just use it. See, now that's out of adjustment for them. guys that's how easy it is to sharpen a chainsaw chain with the chicago electric electric sharpener now this chainsaw sharpener you can bolt it to you something but i just keep mine in a box and now i use these c clamps here and just clamp it on to my little work table you can clamp it on to anything with some clamps or you can get two holes on each side you can actually Boked it on something if you want to leave it on something permanent. It's got little holes right there on each side. Like I said, this is plastic. It's not a heavy duty made. It's, it's not by no means the best chainsaw sharpener on the market. I ain't trying to say it's the best one on the market. But for less than $30, if you watch when you get the coupons and stuff, you sometimes you can get this for about $20, $22. And to me, you can't beat it. For keeping an angle cut on your chainsaw and like i said i'm gonna put this chain back on my saw and then i'm gonna hit it a fine lick with just a file with my hand real quick but guys i don't think a man can beat this for thirty dollars i seen another one i kind of like but it clamps on to your bar without removing your chain but then you it's hand operated so it is a little more manual work involved, but it does keep the angle on your chain real good. But I was at Harbor Freight one day and I seen this and I picked it up and I've, I've been using it and I really like it. I'm rough on chainsaw chains, so when I seen it, I said, that there will keep me a new angle. And you can replace the little wheel here on it. When I... When I purchased it, I got me an extra little wheel, grinder wheel, and I think they like $3 and something a piece. And see this wheel's rounded. So when you pull it down on that tooth, it's just like a rounded file, so it's gonna cut the bottom part of your tooth. It's, it's rounded, so it's gonna do it. That's why you gotta adjust this stop back here, not to let it go too deep down into your link on your chain. First time you do it, you're gonna be a little it until you get it just it and then you're going man this is quick it really works well but i like mine and i'm glad i purchased it. like i said by no means is it the best chainsaw sharpener on the market i ain't trying to say it is i'm just saying it's worth thirty dollars to me and if you don't like sharpening chainsaws or you like me you kind of rough on your chains this here can save you money from buying chains. But like I said, this more than paid for itself the day I brought it home when I got all them six chains down and sat out there and cut the new angles on them where some of them were so buggered up. I done filed on them, got them out of the out of their degrees that need to be in on. But that's six chains at a, just say an average of eighteen dollars a chain. Some of them's more, some of them a little less but i'm gonna just say average of 18 dollars so yeah it quickly paid for itself but i'm very happy with it guys real easy real convenient 
nothing to it. So now I'm gonna get my chainsaw over here and I'm gonna put the chain back on and I'm gonna show y'all how I just hit the lick with my file after I put my chain back on the saw. Like I said, I stored mine back in the box. I don't leave it sitting out because it ain't something I used at all. And when I store it, I undo this little nut right here on the bottom. Put it right back on there like that. And then all I gotta do is stick it in the box. Guys, when you get this, I think the only thing that wasn't assembled on here was the little brake, which ain't but one screw. You just put it on the brake handle. And you can put it different directions according to which hand you want to use. And if you want to push down or you want to use your back to pull. I like mine set like this when I grab and push it. It's kind of backwards to a brake on a four-wheeler. If you want it like a brake on a four-wheeler, you just flip it over that way and you pull it down. To me, it works work for me the way it's sitting right there and that's how I ended up setting it and I like it like that. And I just throw it over here out of the way. Guys, this here is the D-Rail chainsaw, and I got a review video on it. I'm trying to attach a bug for y'all off of Amazon. You can watch it and end up getting this offer around $150, and it comes with a 20-inch bar and a 14-inch bar and a chain for each bar. I'm going to tell y'all something. For a hundred and fifty dollar saw. Well matter of fact, I, I put this up there with some of them three or four hundred dollar saws. Three hundred dollar saws myself. You have to go watch the review on it. I've done a pretty good bit of cutting with this saw. I am very, very pleased with this saw. When you compare $150 to a 400 300 to $400 steel, that's still made in China or somewhere it ain't made in the U.S. Uh -oh. Now I'm not comparing this saw to no six and eight hundred dollar steel the industrial and professional yeah i think they better saws especially if you're going to be using them every day but if you're a person that don't use a saw to make a living or you ain't using it every day i think you'll be just as happy with this saw right here as you are the three and four hundred dollar saw This ain't a review on the saw. I've done, done a review on the saw. Like I said, y'all can go back and watch that video. Now, guys, I know some of you sat right there and watched me do that. Y'all watched me put that chain on backwards, didn't you? And was laughing the whole time I was doing it. Didn't say a word. One of you could have said, hey, Eddie, hold up. You're putting your saw chain on backwards. But no. No, y'all had to sit there and just, just watch me do it so I had to take it back off. Let's see how y'all are. Yeah. I got plenty of buddies like y'all. Just watch me do something wrong so I have to redo it. Now, let's try it this way. I bet it could a little better with the chain on this way. Now 
Yes, normally I got my saw outside and I'll put the blade here, the bar in a vise. But all I do is after I run it through that Chicago electric, I just take my file and just give it a quick little rub there to make sure it ain't got any burrs. I'm doing is just making sure I ain't got no burr or nothing. I ain't trying to do no sharpening because this sucker's already sharp. It's just kind of like the final final rub when you're sharpening your pocket knife after you sharpen it on a rock you give it a lick on a piece of leather. Some of you professional chainsaw sharpeners going to say you don't use a saw a file like that, just pulling it back and forth. I know that too. Kind of give it a little twist, but I ain't. Like I said, I ain't sharpening my saw blade. That's what the sharpener doing. All I'm doing is knocking the little burrs off right there. If it's got in. Now see that tube right there, guys? I know y'all can't see it up close. But if you got a tube at that flat spot right there, there's a couple of them right there. You use the flat file right there on top to knock that burr down. I don't do this every time I sharpen it. But if I see one kind of catches my eye, I, I hit it with that just to give it a knock that burr off that top flat piece. Turn around and do the other angle the same way. And guys, that's all I do. Looks like you got some sharp points on her now. There she is. She ready to go cut some more, but I ain't going out there in this rain cutting nothing for y'all. <laughs> and guys, I received something else here in the mail. We're going to open it up and give this a little try. Now, I done opened this up and I done charged it. This, my friends, is electronic candle lighter, they say. Riata, R-E-I-D-E-A. I guess that's how you say that, Riata. Comes with a USB charging cord. You just plug it right here in the bottom and plug it into your phone charger and charges it up. It has a little on and off switch right here on the bottom. You got to turn your switch on. And your little blue light comes on the bottom, lets you know it's on. And then you switch right here on the top. When you push it up, see that fire? Well, of course, we're going to test it on a candle. They said it lights candles, it's a candle lighter. This candle's never been lit before. Look at there. Electronic candle lighter. Now, of course, they say you can only hold this on for like 10 seconds and then it automatically go off. So I guess some of you smokers out there, you might could light your cigarette with it. I'm going to see if I can light this little torch right here with it. Look at there, it'll light a torch. I'm sure I could use it to set a piece of paper on fire. 
Yep, it a light a piece of paper on fire. I'm gonna put that out before it gets too big of a fire. <laughs> but that there is electronic candle lighter made by Reida, R-E-I-D-E-A. Now guys, I can see when you got some people that you don't know what kind of Christmas gifts or birthday gifts and want to get them a little something, I can see where that'd be handy to have a little lighter they get cheap to keep charged. And easy to light candles. I, I've seen trying to light a candle with a cigarette lighter and you end up burning your stomach and all that kind of stuff. With this here, you can light candles. Them ladies, that'd be a good little gift for your lady friends. It's a good little gift for you me and friends. <laughs> but guys, if you're interested in that, there'll be a little Amazon link down below where you can purchase that if you like it. I, th I thought that was pretty neat. Thought I'd just show it real quick on the video here. Like I said, it works good. <laughs> Blow that candle out and light that again. Oh, I done turned it off on the bottom. We got to turn it back on, don't we? show y'all a close-up shot of that. There's how she works. Well, it says it'll do up to a hundred, a hundred lights. Now, I guess that depends on how long you hold it. But again, let's see, it says it only stay on 10 seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,000. Yep. I'm probably counting a little slow since I talked slow, but 10 seconds the baby dog went off. Well, there you go, guys. Something you can get your lady friends. Let me change it. Some you can get your friends and loved ones. I ain't gonna say lady friends with the world we living in. And guys, that's the end of this little video. Y'all can see I've still got my diesel heater. The diesel heater works real good. Now, as cold as it is today, I got a little propane heater sitting back there on the bottle. Y'all can probably hear it in the background because it was a uh, 30 degrees when I come in here and I knew I was going to want to do stuff so I got the heater on back there and once it gets up to my temperature then I turn that propane off in my little diesel, diesel heater here to keep it the temperature I want the rest of the day but I hope y'all enjoyed that like I said that chainsaw sharpener is made by Chicago Electric they sell it at Harbor Freight I ain't got no a links that I can put down there for Harbor Freight. I guess I can put you a Harbor Freight link down there if you want, want me to put you a Harbor Freight link in the description below. But I really, I've used that chainsaw sharpener several times, guys, and it really does work. And like I said, I'm by no means saying that that is the best chainsaw sharpener on the market. It's not the best one by no means. But for the average guy, like myself, if you ain't cutting wood, I mean, it sharpens the chain. It, it sharpens the chain and it puts new angles on it. It's just cheaper made, made out of plastic. It ain't something for somebody who's going to be sharpening chains on a daily basis. But like myself, sharpening chains, I sharpen all my chains a couple times a year. And then if I booger one up, I got chains in here that I can just swap chains. And then one day when I won't, ain't doing nothing like today, I can set it up and sharpen all my chains. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you never subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a thing. And the best way you can help me out is to share my videos on your social media. That's the best way you can help me grow my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Hope y'all have a blessed day. God bless. See y'all next time.